Welcome to part two, where we are going to be discussing social media automation. Now, if you missed part one, we discussed the structure of the database. So before going into this, make sure you see why and how we structured that database in a way that makes this whole thing work. But for this episode, we're going to be jumping into the automation components of it. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. My name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely swing by our website and don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course that's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here and get to the heart of this video and that is social media automation. So we are going to be using Zapier to automate the processes that we've set up and identified for our Airtable database. So we're going to be flipping between the two softwares. As I mentioned already, if you missed on, if you missed the video about how we structured this database, probably want to go back and watch that first because we're going to be going into some pretty aggressive stuff here. So we have two big automations built. Ideally, I mean, depending on the number of social media platforms you use, you would have a number of different, um, videos for each social media platform. So just a quick recap here, we have the different social media platform that we pick when we set up our uh, post and it ties to all these different assets. And the first thing we need to do is actually create this image post. Now at the very end of our last video, I teased it and showed you how we can pull this information in. So I imagined, you know, maybe I'm a guest on this podcast and how are they going to create an automated a uh, social media post using a quote of mine from that episode. Well, here is exactly how we did it. We created the button here, and this is a newer Airtable feature. We are leveraging the power of a webhook here. So we set up a Zapier webhook, and you know we've gone into detail about this in other videos. I'll be sure to include some linked resources for you. But basically what we're doing is we're passing all of these parameters so that when this button is pushed, it tells Zapier, hey, it's time for some automation, and here's what you need to know. Here's the guest name, here's the guest image, here's the record ID, here's the quote, and we're gonna take all those elements from this post that we've already interlinked in our database, we're gonna take all those elements and we're gonna put it into our automation. That way we can build the image the way we want to. Now, quick pause, we're also using a software here called Banner Bear. Now I'm relatively new to Banner Bear. I'm just experimenting with it. I'm, there may be other cheaper solutions out there, other better solutions. Uh, if you have some advice that, you know, something that works for you, I welcome you to uh, let me know in the comments below. But this is the one I'm using for this. And basically if you drill down into this template, what you see is the following. We've got these different elements inside of our image we set up the you know the background color and all these different parts this particular thing is you know static so my wonderful podcast maybe i put the real title in i don't actually have a podcast but if i did um maybe it's my awesome podcast you know whatever that is this is static text but over here in this you know this particular element here and this is called tweet we also have this, which is called avatar. We have this, which is called name. And so these are all things that we're going to pass parameters into so that when we build our automation, we have dynamically updating pieces of information inside of this image. Okay, so that's really the setup here. So let's get into that automation now and go through the steps of it. So first, we're creating that social media image. Again, as I mentioned, we start with a webhook. More on that in other videos. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how we build that webhook. But suffice to say that when we do build that webhook, we get past all of those pieces of information that we identified in our formula in Airtable. So the guest image, uh, there's the, the you know, URL for that image that we you know, worked so hard to scrape out. Here's the quote that we uh, assigned to this particular post. Here's the person who's gonna be featured on this episode, the name of that person. Here's the record ID. And quick pause here, Record ID is unique for every person who is, or I'm sorry, for every record inside of Airtable. So every record, as soon as it's created, it is assigned a unique record ID. We're going to use this information to update the corresponding record later in our automation. 
Okay, so moving on past here, now I'm going to create an image in Banner Bear. And so by drilling into this, you know, I pick, of course, what uh, template I want to create that image in. You might, by the way, have multiple templates that you want to create from or create with. And so you could set up some filters that say, well, if this is a Twitter post, I want to create a Twitter element. If it's a Facebook post, you know, maybe a, a Facebook element. So you might have different templates that you use, or you might put them on like a round robin. So you are just cycling through different templates. This is all possible, but for the simplicity of this video, I'm just using a single template. And now I need to bring in all those elements. So what's the avatar image that remember is if I flip back to banner bear, this is my avatar image. So what am I bringing in there? Well, I'm bringing in the, uh, the guest image that we identified in our webhook. Who is the uh, person that made this quote? Well, that's the name field that we passed again through our webhook. Also, here's the tweet text. You see, I've in, uh, encompassed it with quotation marks and then I bring the text in the middle here. And so we're able to put all these elements into that image. Now, when the image is done being created, then the output here is a URL. So we're going to use that URL and actually plug it back into our Airtable database. And so that's our third step. We're going to update a record in Airtable. Now it's important to note that we passed that record ID. Remember, we passed the record ID through when we created our webhook. So again, we're telling Airtable, hey, we actually need to update that specific record ID that we identified in our webhook step. And what we need to do is now add the social media image that we just created and we can record that URL at both the attachment level and at the, uh, the URL level. So flipping back, you know, quickly into Airtable, let me go to the all records view here and you see that we have the image post and this is the actual attachment itself. And we also have the, uh, the URL. Well, if we paste that URL to that image, it's actually going to show up as an image. It's a neat feature that Airtable has. So we're, we're passing that same information to two different field types. In this case, it's an, an attachment field. In this case, it's a URL field, but it, it's the same data, but it represents or presents very differently. So that is how we can capture that image. So let's just walk through a quick uh, example of this. Again, we did this in part one, but I want you to see this, this whole, uh, automation in, in, in the works. So let's suppose that, you know, we had this episode that tied to this person, uh, and I'll pick on myself some more. Let's say I said something else, uh, in this episode. So this would be how to scale, you know, with the automation. And so once we link to that person, then we can enter our quote in here, uh, working eight hours a day is not for me. So maybe that's our quote from this episode and we go ahead and put that in. And now going back to posts, we want to reference that asset, right? So again, we're going to go to that particular, uh, that particular episode and we're going to reference the new quote that we just added. And maybe, you know, it doesn't matter, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, I'll, I'll pick on Twitter again. And in the cleaned view, uh, we want to make sure we have all of our right pieces here. So we have the right asset linked, the right quote, and we've decided on a social media platform and we can now create that image. So once we push that button, that's going to fire our webhook. So again, the first step is firing the webhook. Then it's going to communicate with Banner Bear. Then it's going to update that information in Airtable. So flipping back into Airtable, we see that that information was just updated and there is the image. We can't push the button multiple times. And this is an important feature because we have set up a rule that says that the button has to be, or rather the image cannot already exist. So if the image is already here, we don't want to create a new image. So in order for us to create a new image, we'd have to delete this one before we could push that button again. Now we need to settle on the next part. And that is the setting up of a schedule so that we have our posts going out when we've scheduled them. So in order to do this, you might remember uh, that we have a particular formula here that's called minutes from schedule. And this is just a simple date time difference. It's saying, Hey, what's the difference in minutes between when this post is scheduled to run and now the moment now. And so in this case, if I were to pick, you know, right now, which is 719, uh, July 19th at, uh, almost 1 PM, uh, mountain time. If I put that time in here, then how many minutes off would that be? 
And this is an important feature because when we set up our views, this is going to be a view that triggers this thing to happen on the schedule that we've decided. And you see that we get there by saying, well, this is a Twitter post. So the social media platform has to be Twitter. That's kind of obvious. And then the next two parts are, we want it to be greater than or equal to 10 minutes ago and less than or equal to 10 minutes from now. So we're giving ourselves a 20 minute window and saying this automation needs to fire sometime in that window. And so when something meets all three of these conditions, it's gonna appear in this view. And I can prove that by just selecting an appropriate time here and date time, you know, there we are, 7.19, almost 1 p.m. And now that record is appearing in this view. And so now what we want to do is make sure that there's an automation built that will set, send this image and appropriate text to Twitter. So uh, this is misnamed as post to Facebook. Let's go ahead and name it appropriately. So we're saying when there's a new record in a specific Airtable view, in this case, that, uh, that specific view called Twitter post that we just went over, only when, a view, only when a record appears there do we want to then trigger the automation to post to Twitter. And so moving into our second step, we have the following. Check out our interview with, and then we're bringing in the name of the person that we interviewed. And here is the link to the appropriate asset that we want to direct people to. You know, this is where you bring your episode URL in. And then here's where we're including the image for that, uh, that social media post that we created. And so this may have been, this may have run in the background while we were waiting, but let me see if it has, I'll manually try to trigger on this. All right. So it hadn't yet run. My uh, Zapier runs every one to two minutes. So now popping into Twitter, we should be able to see that that just, <laughs> that just uh, worked. So that just got sent. Let me go ahead and delete this so that people don't get the wrong idea. Uh, but you see how all of this comes together. So now we don't have to sit there and manually log into our different softwares or schedule things. And you know, we can do all of that directly from Airtable, include, you know, links, you know, appropriately link our posts to the different assets that we want to share and have everything fire off automatically. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.